guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. As you can see, today I am joined by Max and Rick all the way from Finland here live. Clash Royale Supercell interview. Guys, how you doing? Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you very much for the, for the invitation and happy to be here too. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's been yeah. A while. <laughs> I think so. It has been a while. I, I, I wanted to start just catching up with you guys. How are things going? Obviously, uh, the game is, it seems outside looking in to be at like all time high, which is crazy to say after five plus years of this game being out. Uh, are you guys still remote? I can see you're probably, it looks like you're home uh, right now. Are you guys all working together or is it kind of just mix and match depending on the week? I know we're working, uh, yeah, usually together. We were slacking each other. And uh, mm -hmm. sometimes I go to the office too, but yeah, we're mostly walking remotely. I think that is the you know the COVID situation at the minute, you know, with the numbers being high again. I think we're all just trying to be safe as well. Um, but yeah, like working working on Slack, Zoom calls, uh, we got used to that over the two years. So yeah. Like, makes it easier anyway yeah it's weird i have like i on my other job too i'm all remote we're all remote and for me it's it's definitely it's cool in a lot of ways and you can be very productive and it's in it's kind of in the zone but also you miss something i don't know about you guys but you, you definitely miss something of not being together all the time all the time too <laughs> But anyway, we're not here to talk about work environments. We're here to talk about Clash Royale. So, fellas, I just want to start with, uh, well, I want to start with probably one of the more popular community requests out there, a very small thing before we get into the real meat and potatoes of this uh, this chat. And that is the deck copy feature, right? I know there's a lot of quality of life changes coming to the game, uh, but one that seems to be, you know, really the most frustrating right now is not being able to copy a deck uh, from your, your game into a challenge uh, or, you know, a grand challenge, whatever. So is that coming? Uh, what other quality of life updates in case people missed the uh, post do you have uh, coming our way soon? Yes. So yes, it's, it will be coming at some point, like in the next update. I think it's pretty much ready right now. Like okay. you, it's it's done. It's done. We just need a client update uh, to put it in the game. But yes, it's ready. It will perfect. Come. So next client update, we will get the uh, <laughs> the yes. elusive copy deck feature. That's cool. That's cool. I'm sure you guys feel the pain too, right? I mean, even even on the team, right? You're like, ah, oh, I gotta put it in. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It makes I me mean, stick with the deck way longer. <laughs> it was quick turnaround to get that fixed because it was like, yeah, we all figured it out. Yeah, like, okay, guys, so is this enough? Hey, <laughs> you guys, I, when, you, when you're complaining about the old game and you're slack, then you know it's gotten to uh, it's gotten to a new point. But uh, guys, looking back here, we have level 14. We have champions since we last spoke. A lot to, to talk about. Even magic items weren't really what they are right now the last time that we spoke here on the channel. So I want to start with, I guess, champions in the level 14 update in, in general. It was a tumultuous update. A lot of like ups and downs. But I think that when the the dust settled in my opinion things were pretty positive and the numbers it seemed like everybody you know heck uh, uh, my my friends but my best friend's kids in high school he's like all oh, my friends are playing clash royale they need tips all of a sudden and it felt like it just re-entered the zeitgeist clash royale so looking back how do you guys feel about the update in general uh i have a couple follow-up questions but just inter interested to hear your thoughts on you know what you think of the champions in level 14 update us uh, as a team after that update went out we had like a post-mortem like what, what do we think how, how do we feel it went um like you said, there were some ups and downs. I think the major major thing that I messed up was the Slash Royale <laughs> the announcement. I wasn't going right? to say it, right? Yeah. I know. You, you know yeah, up. everybody knows that. Like, but that yeah. really, that really, um, that really sucked. That really sucked. The the way that it, that came out, and I, it was just an idea that we were trying to get out there. We thought it would be really cool, but we just, I just missed that completely. So that was that all falls on my shoulders for that. Um, but overall, the update as it goes. I think the team is super happy about it. I think, as you said, the re-engagement that we've we've seen and new and new players coming into the game is just oh, the influx has been crazy and and great. And I, I really like seeing that. I'm happy that I'm on the team to like live through that. Right? Um, yeah, man. Sense. Like that's yeah. so good. Like you know, from the down like the downward spiral, it it was going. Um, like with people not really enjoying Clash Royale as much. I think 20, 2021 was a really good stepping stone. I think 2022 is going to be even better. And I'm, we're even looking at 2023. Like I think 2023 is going to be even better than that. I think wow, it's wow, going to be wow. better and better, man. Okay, so you guys, sounds like you have a pretty long roadmap, at least internally, of what you guys want to want to do here. What about you, Max? Are you, uh, yeah, how, how do you, anything to add there in terms of thoughts on the, the champions and the level 14? No, yeah, I think Rick said it all like for the game's perspective, like it's all the metrics are up. It's like it's super cool and super nice to see, like to 
yeah to be to be part of that and like not a revival because the game wasn't dead but like to really like see a lot of new people and new players coming and the game being more alive than ever yeah, let's, let's put it like this yeah uh, yeah from the community perspective yeah i think that's uh, like all the i know level 14 is still like sensitive topic for some of them so uh, yeah and the whole all the announcement was made and how uh slash royal was made to uh, play the big part of it and i think if we would have done one thing differently that would have been that like but overall like with the step back yeah the, the date is like a big success and we're really happy with that yeah absolutely and it felt like my big concern because we talked we spoke a little bit you know get you guys to touch base with us creators you know obviously as, as uh you know on the on the influencer side and uh one thing that we spoke about was I, w I was a little scared about pushback on level 14s having access to the champions, you know, and you guys too were like, I don't know how the community would respond, but I felt like you guys hit the nail on the proverbial head with allowing all of them to be played at tournament level standard that alleviated a lot of the concerns that I felt like we would have otherwise had. So props to you guys and the team for making that decision. Uh, a follow-up on, on champions. What do you think of the three champions you have right now? The queen, the skeleton king, and the golden knight and are you do you plan to add more yes yes definitely yeah 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 uh can't tell much uh yeah. much uh, like right now but yeah yeah definitely we plan to add more and i think it's that's what's great with champions the new rarity it opens like the gameplay much more than before so yeah it's just good really yeah good. rick anything to add there because uh, do have kind of a follow-up yeah golden knight's op right now <laughs> <laughs> he's unpredictable though like i do feel yeah. like that's the rub on him and maybe that's the way you guys intended him to be i guess that's a question for you do you like the unpredictable nature of the golden knight or are do you plan on like kind of tweaking him a little bit to make him a little bit more i don't know easy to react to on the defensive end well yeah it's gonna be touching the next balance changes so little spoiler here mm -hmm. uh we're okay. gonna it's gonna be like a bit nerfed uh but yeah i think it's it's a weird balance between like having something fun and having something like super like the, that the pro players will really love yeah and i think for golden knight there was a bit of the like yeah it's fun it's kind of random and that's also what makes uh, royal fun you know so that that's that kind of stuff so yeah yes and no because i think we we want it to like be yeah be more straightforward too and, and like players can understand more easily like uh how, how he will react and yeah. Well, I applaud you guys not listening to, you know, loud talking head YouTubers and community people like me, like yours truly, uh, and buffing immediately the Skeleton King, because I think that everybody thought he was underwhelming out the gate, myself included. And now it feels like he's pretty powerful. Like he's found a very cool niche inside the meta with like Skarmy and cards like that. So I think that all the the champions feel special and, and different and unique. So props to you guys on that. Uh, going forward, do you like the dynamic how it is right now, like four or five cost uh, with like one or two elixir cost abilities? Or do you see that also, you know, changing widely? Who knows? There might be a two, you know, elixir champion with a three cost ability. Uh, is that all like, do you have any, you know, I don't know, philosophy there internally, or it's just whatever concepts you find appealing? I think that will go with like the balance testing that we do with that. Like I mean, the, the functionality is there, so we can adapt yeah. to that. It doesn't have to always be the same. Um, but I suppose it depends on the card, right? Um, yeah. If it feels OP at one elixir, then yeah, like this, this bring that up a bit. Or um, yeah, but that's again with the the balance testing that we do with uh, creators and internally. Yeah, um, and it gives you another dynamic to change on a card too, like another thing that you can change the cost of a a cooldown of an ability. So like, there's a lot of ways I feel like to really fine tune these champions too, which is nice. Uh, I was gonna ask my next question was actually about cards. Obviously, every year the cadence of new cards released goes down, uh, and I don't think that's you know unexpected by anybody, right? I think that in the beginning there was a lot of cards the team probably already had that they wanted to release already ready to go, uh, and throughout the years too, it feels like some players are saying, you know, I don't need any new cards. I have enough cards. There's enough things to upgrade in this game. Other players say, yeah, new cards are exciting. I like new cards. Bring more new cards. So how do you kind of balance out those two opinions? And where does the team fall on that? And also, maybe will new cards more often be, you know, champions or heroes here this year uh, in the game? Me? <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> It's it's a card has to feel special, right? So we can't just be like, yeah, let's throw in like five cards um, now because it... Uh, each card has to have its own unique, you know, character design in there. Uh, a little, like, hidden backstory, but, like, internally we have our little backstories and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I don't I don't think rushing in and just throwing a load more cards in, as you said, for the casual player, it's like that's more things I've got to upgrade or more way more cards that I need to learn how to use and like how do I use it in defensive, uh, offensive, or what? Um, so I can hear both sides of the story from the communities and like I want more cards, and then it's really hard to balance that. Um, but I think with the champions thing right now, that is it's new, it's fresh, and I think that's where our major focus is um, for this year. Um, uh, but other cards, we did actually speak about this in the, me uh, the meeting this morning, <laughs> the this morning's meeting, like, hey, like any new cards that we can think of, just normal rarity. So um, we haven't got a defined path of like normal cards yet, but of course, we're always discussing and trying to adapt when we need to with each update that comes. A follow up yeah. on cards too, and that makes sense. Is and I'm not sure if you guys can can answer this necessarily, but uh, it's spawners and buildings. Not saying I want more of them. <laughs> I'm just asking because I made the observation that you know, other than furnace and goblin cage, I want to say you've never added a defensive building. I could be wrong, but I don't feel like there's been one. Uh, no spawners added, which again I think is good personally, right? Uh, I like the Tombstones, you know, meta right now, though it's really cool to see those changes. Uh, but I want to kind of ask you, especially as it pertains to buildings, do you guys just think there's enough, you already have everything you need right now in the game, or there is some sort of internal mandate or philosophy, no more buildings at this point in the game? Uh, any thoughts there? I don't think we think about like no more buildings. Goblin Drill is technically a building. True. Like true. If, you, if, yeah. you, if you really think true. about it, but it's like an offensive building, like you said. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think it like for the team, also for the gameplay, it's, I think we want to aim for to be like the more, uh, the less defensive as possible. Like we want people to play card and to be offensive. Like we yeah. don't want a stale gameplay when we all camp on our, on our own defenses and just wait for the game to, to pass. So yeah, building as I like, they are, are like this, they are, they are defensive cards and units so yeah but we don't like it's not something we talk about like as a team like hey no more building it's over <laughs> just that yeah it doesn't doesn't come makes sense makes sense to me i want to ask you about like the most hated cards in the game real quick and i just want to get your personal takes on them like it doesn't have to be That's like fun. an official supercell stance but how do you guys feel about i feel like everybody everybody's different i'm sure but in my comments electro giant and uh, Mega Knight. People hate those two cards. What do you guys think about those two cards? Just from like your own personal stance on those. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Are you annoyed by them? That's a bit crazy actually way there, Max, because like if you look at the trading, so we're looking at data the other day, when people are trying to trade, they're all yeah. trying to get the Mega Knight. They, they love so the Mega Knight. They love hate. It's a love hate it, thing. Yeah, yeah. They love it, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're like, I went against a dirty Mega Knight player yeah. on ladder playing Mega Knight themselves. It's so true though. But do you feel like those cards are are I mean, they seem like they're in a good spot in terms of win and use rates in the game. Uh, but in terms of frustration, I, I can definitely feel it. Because I've been there, I'm sure you guys have too, when an E-Giant is stomping down your side of the arena and all you have is like a Skarmy and Bats and whatever. You're like, okay, I take my tower, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, for the, I, I have the same feeling for the Electro Giant. Like, when he drops, like, at the back of, of the map, I'm, like, doing the crying Crap. emoji. I'm yeah. like, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think it depends a lot on the trophy range. Yeah. Like uh, when when where are, are they used the most? I think Mega Knight is really like a super like mid ladder thing, if I can say it like this. I don't yeah. see it that often, and it's not frustrating to me. Electro Giant, yeah, much more because even if he connects to the tower with like so like so, <laughs> like so fewer HP, it's like yeah, it's gonna do so much damage. But it's yeah, it's tricky to to balance. I would say like, I don't feel like super frustrated. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I know. I know we were like it's like the most hated cards for the players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's a fair take, and uh, it's nice that you guys don't just rage and then go tweak a card yourselves. <laughs> You'd be like, yeah, I'm just gonna get a little nerf, little little nerf to the uh, e giant damage. Uh, I want to shift gears real quick here and talk about uh, kind of two final thoughts. One is on magic items and progression generally in the game. I know a massive mandate for you guys in 2021 was making progression easier in Clash Royale, and I have to say, man, this will get me you know some hate from from some of my viewers, I'm sure. But if you look back to where this game started. And where it is right now, good God, it is insanely easier to progress in Clash Royale. Is it perfect? No, but it is so much better than what it was. Like when everything costed a ton of gold and gold, you had to spend gold to battle in the very big, in, in beta, at least of, of Clash Royale. 
that was tough, man. There were no challenges. There were no, you know, clan wars, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but I want to ask you guys, are you now satisfied with progression, with magic items, and everything else that you guys have added to the game last year? Or is there more work to be done? Uh, how do you feel about how easy or difficult it is right now to get to, to you know, level 14 or to max out a card or a deck? I should get my spade and just, like, start getting ready to shovel, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like... Um, to be fair, I think I think uh, for 2021, I think that was a great target for us to be looking mm -hmm. for for like progression, and I think we we did knock it out of the park. I think Magic Items has really brought uh, for for new game uh, new players coming into it. I think it's really really good. They they can reach pretty high. I think I watched was it KFC like um started to stream again. It was like how fast could I get up to the yeah? I watched that. Recently. Yeah 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 yeah. That was really interesting. Like just to see it from that perspective as well. Um, but I think yeah we're still I, I still feel that there's still more work to do i think there's other types of progression that we can go towards as well i don't think it needs to be this way i think it can branch out as well um i think that's something that we just need to sit down as a team and try to figure out okay does it really need to go like linear like this is the only way to do progression or is there ways that we, we can branch out for that um and magic items i think new magic items we've we've seen a lot from the community like hey what about this what about that um and we've taken them on board we've got them on our community list that max and i have and i think that's something that we're bringing to the team and we're having discussions about as well um and gold i mean i think the way that we've done with gold i think it was good i i think over inflating gold and just making it too fast could have damaged the game um but i think progressively if we keep doing what we're doing with increments to make sure that it doesn't just damage the game like and everybody just gets to max so quick because if you reach the end like you you and i think max well no you didn't have every card maxed out but max did you but like there was quite a few players who were like completely maxed out that had nothing to do yeah um so yeah. I, we yeah. don't really want that as well like we want we need something to chase as gamers right um yeah yeah but, but i think the balance still needs to be I think there's still, yeah, some work to be done, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. I can, yeah, go ahead, Max, sorry. Yeah, yeah, just like uh, like, like you said, it went clearly better with the, in the last year with the magic items and the gold influx. But I think that, as you said, there's like the vertical progress and like horizontal progress. And I think like for the players, they also need something, the progress to feel more compelling and not just be like, okay, I need to play ladder. I need to like do the challenges to just to progress in the game to have more goals more wild cards stuff and uh, they should like still there's still work to do in the game to have for the players to have more options to progress and like more more opportunities interesting so do you have i i feel like i feel like you're hinting at something fellas there a little bit maybe Ver this vertical or i should say this horizontal progress if you will this non-linear progress anything uh that you can color in there uh if not you know does that play into which my next question was is like what are your focus what is your focus for this year in the game i think well we made a uh we made a, a little blog about that inside the game recently and i'll have that um, yeah linked as well yeah cool uh so that is the goal we, we are trying to be vague because we we need to test out things um because if it doesn't work out and we've said it then we just yeah we disappoint people if we sure. mention exactly what it is um but know that the ideas that we do have are pretty cool <laughs> um okay. it is revolving around progression still uh at the beginning of q1 q2 and then obviously we need to pivot when we get feedback from the players once that update goes out, et cetera, et cetera. So we can pivot. We don't want to be like so, like solidifying it in stone to be like, okay, this is what we're doing because if we need to pivot because players need something, then we need to do that. But yeah, I, I, I'm sorry I'm being vague, but we, I can't give... <laughs> I no, can't no, use specifics, man. I can't, it's, yeah. No, no, it, it's totally fair there. All right, guys, so for the last question, or the last maybe couple questions, I want to share something hot of the press with you guys. The plan for Clash Royale Esports in 2022. Let's go ahead and watch together, then I'll ask a follow-up. Clash Royale League is back, and it's better than ever. More tournaments, more community support, and a six-week event. Let's talk about Clash Royale League 2022. Hello everyone, I'm Max and I'm Rick. Welcome to this special episode of TV Royale where we are gonna talk about what's coming for the Clash Royale League in 2022. For those of you who might not know what we are talking about, the Clash Royale League is the official eSport program for Clash Royale that we are running since 2018. For 2022, big changes are coming and we'd like to take some time to explain all of the details for you. Well, let's not waste time and go right into it. New, New format. format. 
The biggest change for this year is a brand new format. No more point system or monthly qualifiers. The time has come for golden tickets. As the name suggests, golden tickets will be what you need to qualify for the Clash Royale World Finals, and there will be 16 of them in total. But where can you get one, you might be asking? Well, you have two options. The first one being... Community, community tournaments. tournaments. We partnered up with some of the biggest community event organizers to fully integrate eight tournaments to the official Clash Royale League path. These names should be familiar to you if you follow the Clash Royale competitive scene. The eight golden ticket tournaments will be played in the 1v1 duels format and will offer a prize pool of, wait for it, Max, $50,000 each. We are super excited and looking forward to collaborating with this organization that have been producing some of the best community tournaments and events for Clash Royale. Absolutely. However, Max, isn't that only eight golden tickets? Like, where can we get the other eight from? Well, Rick, in the month of August, we here at Supercell will host a six-week Clash Royale League event where players can secure those eight remaining tickets. This will consist of one big in-game event in which any player will have the opportunity to qualify for the World Finals through special challenges and tournaments. We cannot share many details right now and we work on a better name, but as we mentioned earlier, it will start this August and will conclude with the World Finals from the 23rd to 25th of September. There's um, one more thing though, Max, isn't it? Yes. In addition to the Golden Tickets tournaments now being part of the official Sierra journey, we will also double our support for all third-party and community-driven tournaments. In 2021, one, we helped and supported more than 35 tournaments, global or local, and we're excited to be supporting more of them in 2022. Our goal here is to amplify and empower the community project to provide all players with more opportunities to take part in the competitive scene if they want. More tournaments, more total prize pool, and more formats than ever before. Exciting times. <laughs> yeah. That's it. We hope that you were as thrilled as we are for this new Clash Royale League chapter. With a focus on the community and the six-week event coming this August, this will be a great year for esports in Clash Royale. Once again, thank you very much for your support. Stay up to date with the latest Clash Royale League info by following Esports Royale on Twitter and Instagram. And check out the new Clash Royale esports website. All links are in the description. Take care, and until next time, See you in the, the arena. arena. All right, guys, so that was super, super cool. I love that you're doing the uh, the golden tickets. Interesting to hear how the, the other eight tickets will uh, be, you know, kind of awarded. It, this feels much more inclusive than it was last year. Was that the overall goal here to like, basically give anybody, whether they're an established pro player or not, the chance to kind of compete here? Yeah, yeah, totally, I think. And also, like, working with the community, like, really helping, uh, empowering, like like we said in the video, like, empowering and helping the community and the community project, because they're doing, like, such great events and tournaments, like, for years, for years. So, yeah, we just wanted to, to work with them because they're, they're doing such a great job. Yeah, and I have to say that, you know, pers on a personal level, the esports team reached out and we'll be uh, doing, me and like my team will be putting on a tournament uh, that I'll share more info, I'm sure, at some point on. So props to you guys. Uh, really, really cool to get everybody involved, I guess, more on a, like in an official capacity, I guess. So if, if people out there are looking, maybe some of my viewers want to put together a tournament or something like that. Is there an application process? How, how do they go about that? Uh, yeah, so you can, if you, I think if you Google like, tournaments yeah. supercell you should land on the tournament guidelines page from supercell when you have all the rule set and stuff that we asked for the for the organizers to respect uh to 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 organize the tournament on uh, on all games and then at the very bottom you should have uh, an email that i can actually just say it's tournaments arabas uh, supercell.com tournaments okay. at supercell.com and then you can send an email explaining your project and there will be like people answering to you and like see if you can help you in any way like visibility or like some some money for the price pool or like goodies and stuff like this so yeah Dude, that is super it's open cool. to everyone super cool of you guys because there's so many events from the past I'm thinking, I don't want to tip off my hand for my tournament idea, but I guess I will. But like, you know, King's Cup was so cool. Uh, 2v2, there's opportunity for 2v2 tournaments, World Cup type tournaments. I can think of so many different ideas that were so popular. Team-based, it gives the, the community uh, the ability to actually make a team-based format if they're sad about no teams in CRL, which personally I kind of am, you know? So it gives a lot of flexibility to to the community to do stuff like that as well. Uh, can I ask well, Can I ask you a question? How do you yeah. feel about this with the new format that's actually going on? Do you think it sounds good? Do you, do you like this? Like, is there anything that could have been better? Yeah, man, it, it's, it's weird. I think that like most people, I have my preference of of what I've seen from competitive Clash Royale in the last five, six years or whatever. And I really gravitated towards 
King of the Hill format and team based like and that played into each other. So that was my favorite. So anything other than that, I'd be like, oh, okay, that's cool. I do think it is sounds more compelling than last year. So a step in the right direction in that regard, in my opinion. However, I do think that, boy, given my druthers, I would love to see teams again. I just like rooting for for teams and that storyline. However, with that said, again, I'm interested to see the rest of the details here. You know, I do think that duels format is the best format in terms of, you know, just the way to see more strategy, a wider variety of decks and cards and stuff like that. So I like that you're sticking with duels. Uh, and yeah, I guess I guess those are my thoughts. I guess I'm not sure if you can shed any light on this. Probably not at this point, but I'll ask anyway. Uh, this culminates to, you know, you said eight golden tickets in tournaments, another eight from something we don't know about. So is it going to be a traditional CRL fi world finals like live or do you have any context on how this all kind of culminates at the end of the year? I suppose we can't go into many details at the minute because like we need to, we need to plan it out to make mm. it the best possible format. Uh, a discussion that we did have was like, okay, do we tell exactly what we're going to be doing? But then that kind of limits us. Like if we wanted to pivot and make something even better, then it kind of, True. yeah. So I think it's best that we don't give any like concrete details yet apart from the date. So everybody knows what's happening. Um, and we need to think of a cool name for it as well, which we'll reveal <laughs> when we can. <laughs> Sounds great. Sounds but good. Think, will we be, yeah. We, we, yeah, we can say that our goal is to have like offline and offline events, but we'll see like if, if it's possible in the, for the COVID situation, all of that. So, but the goal is, would be to have like an offline event. Yes. That'd yeah. be awesome. Man. It's been finals, a long time. Yeah. yeah. It's been a long time since I've seen everybody, you know, it'd be, uh, it'd be really cool. And, uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see, uh, what happens. Uh, fellas, thank you so, so much for being so generous uh, with your time to me, my viewers, uh, really appreciate the work that you guys do for the community. Obviously it's oftentimes a thankless job. So appreciate you guys. Uh, anything that I didn't ask you about that I should have that you want to interject here or anything, any, you know, words that I, uh, that you may not have been able to uh, share thus far. No, no, I don't think so. Just thank you very much for the invitation again. It was really yeah. nice. It's been my pleasure, guys. Thank you so much. I'll include all the uh, the links that we talked about, uh, the uh, official uh, esports video that we just watched as well in the description below. And hey, if you guys want to start a tournament or pitch a tournament to Supercell, I'll include that email as long as the uh, along with the tournament guidelines for you guys as well. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, take care, guys.